quite often is whomever invited me doesn't show up for the speech. So this is good to see a little bit of a difference here, Kathy, and uh, thank you very much for that introduction. W one friendly amendment, in case uh, folks think they've missed something on the society page, or worse, given the tenor of our times, they think there's some school for scandal. I know it was just a Freudian slip, Kathy, but my bride is the delightful Miss Mary. Oh, and, uh, that's okay. Uh, Susan, I'm trying to think. They used to uh, mistake her for Priscilla Presley back for Priscilla's unfortunate uh, but, uh And uh, in the case of your speaker, back in a, in a different time in my life, I guess I was resembling Elvis in his last days, uh, searching for jelly donuts. But be that as it You honor me greatly with the opportunity to come and be with you today. And once again, we see that Flagstaff Republican women are setting the pace to the essay winners and those who were on the front lines of what transpires in terms of, think about this, the ultimate form of propaganda yeah. in the classroom. We, we, we used to hear, we used to hear that those who win the wars get to write the history. And yet what has transpired is the left has understood a certain ism activism mm -hmm. and the challenge for those of us who believe in free minds and free markets is to adopt an interest and an activism now hopeful signs abound not only these two young ladies but seated at our table a young lady to whom I listened on the radio in Tucson I guess it was every Thursday <laughs> She would be on giving us tales from behind the walls of Ivy. What is really transpiring in courses at the U of A. And so thank you, young lady, for bringing uh, insight to so many folks with John Justice uh, at the truth, as they call it, the FM talk station in Tucson. Uh, this is not my first visit with you. And as I look around this room, I see a lot of old friends, including those who might not necessarily belong. Uh, specifically to Flagstaff Republican women, I think of one who labors tirelessly statewide, my dear friend Leona there. Leona, I will never forget the day you and Bruce showed up at a town hall that was about 108 degrees at the middle school in Fountain Hills. You guys had just moved in from Indiana. And I'd like to be able to claim the credit, but of course, as you know, Leona is one who is truly, in the best sense of the term, a conservative activist and we know that her work statewide in fact is emblematic of all the work you do in what we could call a challenging environment you honored me with a chance to represent you in the congress of the united states for six years until redistricting and uh, i firsthand had the, uh, the privilege of uh, holding town hall meetings here and dealing with uh, some folks who lurched a bit further to the left but it is good to know that the Republican community and the conservative community in Flagstaff continues to thrive. Yeah. We thank you for your activism, we thank you for your courage, and we thank you for the chance to be here with you today. When you first gave me the chance to serve in the Congress of the, of the United States in that historic election of 1994, that entire time in our lives was, uh, was most wonderful and most demanding. Perhaps you recall the story, but uh, in those days, before they had come up with these neat elliptical trainers that allow you to run in one spot without damaging your knees or running into unfriendly dogs or getting hit by cars, uh, I used to have a course from my house down around one of the hotels and back home. It was about a nine-mile course. I think uh, ADOT had to come down and do infrastructure uh, repair all the time because of my more robust frame at that point in time. But be that as it may, on one fateful day... In early 1993, as we were contemplating getting involved in running for public office, Miss Mary pulled up in the family van, and she had this most curious expression on her face. And uh, I said, honey, I just finished nine big ones. 
And she said, oh yeah? Well, in nine big ones, we're going to have a new little one. <laughs> and I just stopped and said, honey, let's forget all this talk about running for public office. Because there is nothing as important as family. We've been blessed. I, I have a great job at Channel 10. There is, there's, we'll just stay put. And uh, not for the first nor the last time did my wife and best friend give me some powerful and incredible advice. Her voice was remarkably even and serene. And she said, no, I want you to run. Now, don't misunderstand. Service in the Congress of the United States, nor in the United States Senate, is exactly hardship duty. And yet, the rigors of running for public office put demands on families that might not initially occur to you. And for my wife, who is my best friend, to stand by me and to join me here today uh, makes this a very special day as we come back to Flagstaff. So, sweetie, thank you so much. And the little guy who showed up, you may recall on that historic date in January of 1995, when for the first time in my lifetime, our party gained control of the United States House of Representatives. Uh, I was on the House floor with a little guy in my arms. Remember the AP wire photo? It went worldwide. In fact, a friend sent me a copy of that picture that showed up in the International Herald Tribune in Paris as they were visiting there that day. At any rate, the little guy who was 13 months old that day, John Micah Hayward, is now 16, and he's driving. And I offer that as a traffic advisory. <laughs> this has been a fascinating campaign. And uh, let's readily admit that, that those of us who choose to run for public office. And, and I think my friends and I see at least a couple of gents who are battling to serve you in the Congress of the United States in District 1. And it is emblematic of the fact that there is no shortage of talent and ability among those Republican candidates who seek to serve in the United States House. And we welcome them and other interested onlookers today. Uh, but, but I will tell you, if you really want to get attention, just challenge the presidential nominee of your party in the preceding uh, two years. Because reporters have come from far and wide. Three weeks ago, we held a town hall in Tiny Tonopah. How's that for alliterative turn of phrase? A town hall in Tiny Tonopah. And about everybody in town turned out we had over 150 people. And also there was a video crew from NHK. That's right, Japan. Oh. You win the prize, free dinner for two at your uncle's house. If you invite your mom. <laughs> but we had the crew in from Japan. Then just Saturday, in the town of Maricopa, which is growing rapidly, and wouldn't you know the town of Maricopa is just over the county line in Pinal County? <laughs> but be that as it may, there we were in Maricopa, and there was a Dutch television crew there, and a French wow. uh, reporter. Uh, a scribe, I guess we'd say. And um, even today, one of my pals is here as a writer for GQ. And uh, Robert, you'll see Mary dresses me. She does pretty well, right? The, picking out the colors. But what was really interesting, one of our uh, British cousins had joined us at a luncheon similar to this in Scottsdale. You may recall that, Leon. I do. And, uh, and uh, the gentleman was wonderfully polite. But then when he penned his article, for the Daily Telegraph in the UK, he wrote of your speaker today, and I quote, Hayworth, the candidate of broad shoulders, excellent vocal projection, and Trump-like hair. Now wait a minute. This is all real. I may have put some tough skin on it to hold it down against the wind, but you'll note there's no turban here atop my head. But, but, but what is fascinating is the fact that uh, the reporters who join us today and those who come from around the world really seem to understand what is going on in this crucial year of 2010. 
Would that the reporters who come from newsrooms in Washington, D.C. and New York 